Um, so we'll bring the meeting to order. Are there any changes or additions to the agenda as presented? I know uh, we have a COVID disclaimer for fall sports. The rec committees wants us to look at and possibly adopt. We don't actually have that ready to go. Oh, it isn't for this meeting. Okay, uh, I thought it was going to be okay. Yeah, I thought we were going to have it all together today, but uh, both Lisa and myself were a little bit wrapped up with other things and it not quite ready. But uh, I can give an update on what that looks like. Okay, I'll leave it then. Uh, we also have Rob Rodriguez resignation letter. Does anyone have anything else? Do you have anything, Brian? No, that's it. Any other board members got anything? No. no. If not, then uh, we prepared to approve the meeting minutes for July 6th and July 20th. I move to approve both. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Any more discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Rosemary, you got the floor. All right, unmuting. Rosemary. Okay, go ahead, Rosemary. Okay, the state has not sent us the school tax rate yet. I'm hoping it should be any day now. We've received a lot of calls yet today regarding when tax bills are going to be due. And we're telling them we should be receiving it shortly and they'll be due 30 days after we mail them out. I was hoping for September 15th, but it may be even later than that. That's good. Do you know what their holdup is? I'm assuming it's the reappraisal stuff. They haven't finished all their stuff they need to do to set the tax rate. Their website hasn't been updated since July 16th. Hmm. So is this is a Johnson problem because we had a reappraisal? Yes. Yes. Any reappraisal towns are are backlogged. Okay. Also, um, since the state is sending out the general election ballots and our JPs are on that ballot, you guys need to approve sending the ballot to all active voters for the JPs. Because it's a town election. Yes. So this would be handled we would be voting to handle it just like they're handling the state election or the federal election. Yes, so I put, we put our JPs on the backside of the state ballot. Okay, so they just need our authorization to do that? Yes. Okay. So you're looking for a motion? Yes. And and we'll, we'll, go ahead, I'm sorry, Mike. I just moved that we bring it forward. Okay, we have a motion, do we have a second? Second. Yeah, motion second. Hey, welcome, Doug. Thank you. Any discussion? Can uh, Rosemary, would you just re repeat that motion for uh, Donna's sake and mine? Uh, to place the JP ballot on the general election and to send to all active voters for the town of Johnson. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those, those opposed? The ayes have it. And the only other thing I had was the warrant. And what's the board's pleasure? You want to authorize the chair to sign or individually? I move to authorize Eric to sign on behalf of the board. Second. Second that. We have a motion, we have a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, sing five, saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Anything else, Rosemary? That's all. Anybody got any questions for Rosemary? 
Okay. I have a question for Kyle. Go ahead, Mike. Can you show your face, Kyle? Unfortunately, um, I, unfortunately, I can't. I, I, for some reason, I think my, I just need a new computer. <laughs> okay, but you see, I, I kind of stepped on you. I think you actually wanted to second that motion too. But I, know, I couldn't, I couldn't see your face. And so. I know. I, okay. It's really frustrating. Um, as soon as I get my tax return, I'm going to try to get a new computer. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Isn't that a the town Have expense? <laughs> they have nice ones at the dump sometimes. <laughs> All she needs is a monitor, right? <laughs> okay. Are you ready, Brian, to go into your report? Yep. Okay, so, why don't we jump right in? Uh, the, I guess kind of the first, I guess we're still a little bit early for members of the public, so uh, that's start. We'll start that at seven ten. So we'll, we'll do an item or two off of my report first. Okay. Are you anticipating Joan to be on the call? I don't know, uh, but we've got two phone numbers on, uh, and one of them might be Joan. Okay. So we'll loop back to this at seven ten ish, in yep. case she is here. Okay. Uh, so first item. Uh, is there a continued mission for the fiber committee? So the fiber committee uh, provided a summary recommendation to the select board for the, uh, the board to join a CUD and use the CUD to continue uh, to serve the mission of bringing high-speed internet to all residents. Uh, we have done that. So, um, that's that's their basic mission. Uh, is there a continued mission for the fiber committee? Do we want to trend, recommend that they transition to uh, another area or are we going to uh, dissolve the, the board? Uh, it's also worth noting that two of the founding members of the fiber committee, uh, Charles Gallanter and Rob Rodriguez have already resigned from the committee. What's the board's pleasures or thoughts there? You can always get to it. What's that, Nat? Uh, we can always get it going again if we need to, but I don't see a mission for it at the, at the moment. The CUD seems to be a great direction. I agree, ahead, Mike. Or if the two big wheels got done, there's no sense having it. Doug? I, I think that um, there only mission would be conflict with what the CUD might do, which is I don't think, think we need. Uh, uh, I thought they might continue only for the purposes of, of assisting in recruiting people to fill in the, in the uh, um, electronic uh, survey that was going on, but I don't think that's enough reason to keep them. And I, I think they did a great job and I really think their mission is done. Carl, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, no, I, I agree with all that's being said. I think, I think um, we're, I think they're, yeah, they've done a great job and we need to move forward with CUD. So is the board prepared to make a motion to dissolve the committee? So moved. We have a second? I'll second. Motion second, any more discussion? Uh, we do have a member of the public with their hand up. Okay, go ahead. Okay, Diana, uh, I'm unmuting you. Okay, go ahead, Diana. Um, the sound on my end is really horrible. And so I don't know if I'm being broadcast appropriately or not, but- uh, We can um, understand you just fine. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Um, um, my internet is so bad at my house and I've been working desperately for months to try to get it improved. Um, I just found out on Front Porch Forum tonight through a poster from Cambridge that there's a $3,000 broadband access grant through COVID to get coverage to the last mile, which is my case. Because unfortunately, the haves don't really care about the have-nots. 
um, and getting it access equitably to everybody. I see that if there were interest at the town level, it would really, really help those of us who feel like we're fighting a battle alone. Um, you know, I can see that, you know, this, this fiber committee might need to disband, but boy, I, I can sure advocate for some kind of community support so that individuals aren't having to reinvent the wheel and each person, each household, you know, fight their own battle. And I know that the communication union district is going to have things happen, but that's on a, on a, like a year's long time frame. And, you know, we needed access six months ago. So I don't know if that's a, a committee that would evolve out of the one that's disbanding or if it would be a brand new committee, but boy, we sure need something like that on a community level. Thank you, Diane. Anyone want to address that? Uh, I've got uh, another member of the public. Okay. Okay, Charles, I'm unmuting you. Go ahead. So, Diane, that those funds that are available are not for the last mile. They're to connect an existing residence to an existing line if you couldn't afford to connect it prior to. It's not to run any additional, uh, to extend any coverage. If there's a line going by you and you haven't been able to afford a hook into it, yes, that money's available. But to run new, new wire, it's not available. That's available to individual homeowners or that's available at a municipal level, Charles? It's available to individual users. I, and the intent is to make broadband more readily available for remote learning, telehealth, blah, 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 all the reasons we want it. But people can't afford to make the connection, which sometimes can cost several thousand dollars. Thank you. Good to know. All right. I've got another comment. Uh, Shane? Okay, I'm unmuting you, Shane. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, Charlie can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that also has some strings attached where it only applies for broadband and part of the mission of the CUD uh, is fiber. Um, so it's just a thing to keep in mind. Um, I think those those strings attached are in fact the case. Charlie can correct me if I'm not correct about that. I'm not gonna correct you. <laughs> I apologize. I need to step off for a second. Okay. Is there any other uh, discussion on that? We have the motion on the floor. Do you see anyone's hands up or any head nodding? I don't. I'll, I'll remind folks okay. calling in uh, to raise your hand if you're on a telephone device. Uh, you enter uh, six nine, and it'll show your hand raised. So I'll know to unmute you. Uh, if you're one of our telephone callers and, and want to speak. But no, I, it doesn't appear that I have any okay. So at this time, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, seeing five saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The Fiber Committee is disbanded. Why don't we loop back now to uh, Joan St. Pierre and her concerns? Okay, so first I'll ask if either of our telephone callers are uh, Joan St. Pierre. Uh, again, if you want to speak, if you are Joan, please dial uh, 6 9 uh, in the telephone and I'll know to unmute you. I'm, I'm not seeing hands go up, so I'm. Um, Okay. I'm thinking uh, that it's not Joan, so I'll just give a brief summary. Yes. Uh, Joan was a resident who contacted me last week um, that she has a couple issues with uh, municipal services that she's uh, tried to use recently and has sent the select board a letter uh, detailing those complaints. Um, I intend to 
write back and work with her on resolution uh, as best as we can. Acknowledging some of her issues were village related and not town. Yes. Yeah, it, it was a little bit of all municipal services. So right. Not everything is actually our, uh, our purview. Is there any board members who wanted, I know you've all been copied on the letter, who wanted to comment? Okay, if you happen to notice her come on later, we can loop back again. Yeah. Okay, uh, getting back, next item up is the review of the Intermunicipal Law Enforcement Study Group. Um, so again, just as a refresher, this it grows out of uh, budget discussions from a year or more ago with the I guess it really started at a uh, town meeting two years ago uh, where we had a lot of interest in exploring some alternatives for law enforcement in the area, uh, in particular revolving around balancing cost and service. Um, and Roger agreed when we brought that to him last year that it would be worthwhile, he thought, for uh, the town's that contract with the sheriff's department to study that question in a little bit more detail. So we are moving forward with that process. This will be a group to look at options for, uh, you know, for they will represent John Johnson in a, in a study group that's looking at options for law enforcement, balancing uh, services and, and cost. Um, we had intended to make the appointment this week the that went up a little bit late uh, for the notice so uh, i heard from a couple board members that they would like a little bit more time they thought a little bit more time was appropriate but i do want to mention that we did have uh, two individuals write and express an interest to me uh, we had diana osborne and greg tatro expressing an interest in working on the committee how many folks from Johnson would sit on that committee and how far along are the other communities? Two and the rest of the communities are uh, following our lead and they're making the posting. Okay. So we're not further ahead or they're not further ahead. We're basically in step with the other communities. We're like a week or two ahead. Okay. So if we wait until our next meeting, we're not missing anything. Okay. And Matt, you've been really helpful with this. Do you have anything to add? No, you summarized it well. I, I think um, it's great. We seem to have two uh, really great candidates. And I, I just think out of fairness, you know, it's been, I think, basically three full days since that's been up on, that went out on Front Porch Forum. So um, I would, you know, I think we can wait a couple of weeks and see if we get any more response. Okay. Great. If everyone's in agreement, then why don't we move on to the next item? Um, but we really should appoint somebody next. Though. <laughs> we need to get this going. Make sure we have it on our agenda next meeting. Yes. So I'll make, uh, I'll refresh the posting. I'll put that out there. Um, if I can offer a suggestion, this might be a good time to accept questions if anybody has them about the study group. Um, in particular, are two folks that have expressed an interest in serving, uh, Greg and Diana, if they have anything they'd like to know about the group, this would be a great opportunity uh, for us to have a little bit of that discussion and, and maybe uh, build some interest as well. Good. Yeah, let's open it up if there's anybody interested. In All right. Diana, I see you. I'm unmuting you. Uh, okay, Diana, go ahead. Um, I feel like from conversations that I had with Nat about the intent of the committee, I have a good understanding about that. I guess my main question at this point would be how the charge might have um, need to be updated 
with um, current conversations around policing and defunding and things like that. I would be highly, um, well, it would be of great importance to me to make sure that this is looked at as being the, the, the proactive, you know, um, plan that was initially spun out long before our current political climate and that it's not a reactive um, thing. You know, I, I guess um, it's important that we keep the, the, the mission well-defined and transparent and clarify if it's particularly with regard to funding or if it's um, got any kind of um, other undercurrent. Nat, you want to address? Sure. This, um, as, as you mentioned and Brian mentioned, this, this has come about um, long before George Floyd with this, this summer's discussions around right. um, policing nationally. Um, I, what I hear, you know, when I, when I read about defund the police, what I read is, and what I understand is, I think it's a limited understanding, but is that it's, it, it's not simply take all the funding away from the police and do something else. It's let's, as communities, look at what our needs are for law enforcement mm -hmm. um, and, and see what are the, the most appropriate ways to, um, to provide those services. Um, and in, in a lot of cases, especially nationally, there might be some instances where things are, are more appropriately handled by some entity other than the, the police. But um, the, so I, I do, I think you're really right to um, sort of connect those issues and ask that question. Um, it's not the initial intent of this committee. I don't, um, I don't, it's, but, um, but I can see a relationship there. So the, what, what the, you know, um, I spoke about, Brian, with um, the Sheriff's Budget Advisory Committee was that this would be, and we agreed on this language, uh, a committee to study options for maintaining quality law enforcement coverage in a fi financially sustainable way. Um, so, yeah, that's, I uh, hope that answers your question. Yep, thanks. Thank you. Do we have anyone else, Brian? I don't see anybody else. Okay, we'll move on. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. The next up, the discussion of the mission of the Racial Justice Committee. So this draft was finished a little bit late, so I'll share my screen for this. So at our last select board meeting, uh, we had a discussion about um, we had a discussion uh, revolving around uh, the sorry I got to rearrange my windows a little bit. Uh, can, you, can you zoom that in a little? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we had a discussion about the creation of a uh, racial justice committee uh, to serve as a um, a body to provide recommendations to the select board uh, so that we we could have things come to us uh, in a way that was a little bit more uh, more manageable. Uh, and would allow the board to uh, act on recommendations rather than having to develop everything ourselves. Um, this coincides with the village working on uh, some of their own issues and they had a resolution to uh, move some of those issues out to a committee uh, that would serve a very similar purpose uh, so this is an attempt 
to meet the desire of our board and hopefully uh, kind of predict what the village might be interested in also uh, to have a body that can um, fulfill that mission. Uh, I, in the outline here, I kind of lined up a couple essential duties that we might prescribe to them. Um, but again, one of the key aspects for this is the group would provide recommendations to the select board and to the trustees. So um, this would not be a, a, there would still be work for the rest of, uh, for this board to do and for the trustees to do. Um, the action would not be taken by uh, the creation of a new board. Uh, but I'm interested in hearing, uh, I'm, I'm interested in, in hearing from the rest of the board. Uh, and we've also uh, had it shared to us from the trustees that they're looking for something like this from us on what our intent was and between with discussions between Gordy and I, we we might be looking at having a joint board meeting just to get this thing moving and off the ground and, uh, and set up a a uh, committee. Uh, but this is the first uh, stab at it for the select board, uh, throwing it out there for for our review. Is this something we would be interested in passing along to the trustees? We want to modify it. Obviously, they'll probably have their own twist on it. That's sort of where we're at right now. Yeah, I think um, I think this looks really good. It's very focused and straightforward. It it um, it speaks to, um, yeah, the, the, towards working, continuing to work towards um, racial justice. So I think it's great. The one thing I might just add to the bullet points is um, maybe working with um, local um, area agencies like REAL, uh, MVU, VSC, um, sheriff's department a bit. Um, so just maybe something about, uh, working and collaborating with, with our, uh, you know, area organizations. Do you have some suggested wording for that in a bulletized form? Um, well, I, I guess if you can help me a little bit, Kyle, on phrasing for this, mm -hmm. uh, what are you seeing them do with the partner organizations? Uh, so what, what kind of action can we put to that? Well, I guess, again, sort of springboarding off of what the anti-racism commitment statement said, which is we're committed to working with and collaborating with uh, these, you know, legislators, the sheriff's department, and um, area agencies to, you know, further racial justice work and um, education. I guess working with, you know, our, our big stakeholders and... Um, okay, let me try something. It's not perfect, but that is that kind of what you're thinking? Yeah, I think, yeah, that's, that's the gist of it for sure. Okay. And we don't need it perfect tonight because if we're just going to throw it over to the trustees, they may put their own spin on it. And if we're going to get together as joint board meeting, um, then this may change 
in other ways. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. I have a so we'll, go ahead, Doug. I have a question. It seems to me that in the last discussion there were at, at least four different positions on this. One was that uh, you know the it seemed to me that that one person said that uh, the select board ought to be leaving this. This is per, this is pretty much in our wheelhouse. Uh, another person said that uh, kind of democracy is messy. And uh, and we ought to just let it let it roll out in, in kind of in public. Another person, I, I thought there were people saying that we ought to stock stock this with with different sides, different people who are proponents. Uh, so that's a question of who would be the members. And another, this one looks like it would be the idea that we are going to convince people who disagree with uh, what racial justice is why they ought to sign up. Um, I think you need to think about how you get who you're going to appoint or how this is, what the purpose of this is. You're going to, the recommendations are really in the last category. Anyone else? Are I'm you, sorry. Sorry, I, I, I thought of. Sorry. Okay, go go ahead, Kyle. Sorry. Um, I just thought of one. Um, one more thing is to also um, work with uh, the Vermont Human Rights Commission and um, Boryang and uh, Susanna Davis. Um, Would that be in a motion or in a uh, a mission statement? Yeah, that, that, yeah. that sounds too uh, specific to me. To, but okay. Well, I was thinking that that would be covered by uh, my intention was that would be covered by the uh, education opportunities for the community to learn about issues of racial justice. That. Um, but that you think something a, a little different than that? Um, I think it would be mostly around education opportunities, but I guess I'm thinking, you know, these are folks that we've already worked with and they're experts in the field. And it, um, I'm, I like the idea of actually naming them, but. Um, My fear with naming them is uh, what do we do if we leave somebody out? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't, I'm concerned about being too specific in the uh, in this charge that they could, you know. Yeah. Uh, for example, if we didn't include real, can they still work with real? Uh, if there was a group that we left out of here, could they still choose to work with them? Or another group that comes up later on. Uh, that they might want to loop in uh, with us that if we're if we give them a list of people to work with mm -hmm. that has a connotation at least that it is a complete list um, so I, I'm worried about ma about making that because we'll we'll miss somebody we won't make a complete list mm -hmm. um, no, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll, yeah, I guess I was thinking about, you know, uh, agency, you know, I mean, Bor Yang has a relationship with Johnson already. She's, you know, worked with us twice already. I guess I don't, yeah. Um, I'm comfortable with it, but I'll let other people speak. Yep. Can we loop back to Doug? I guess I wasn't sure when we, when you get done, Doug, if you're in support of moving this forward or did you have other thoughts or? Well, I just saw Kim slash Scott thing, saying that we need diverse viewpoints and, uh, and a strong moderator. I don't see anything on here that talks about that. Yeah, okay, I hear where you're coming from. You know, we, I was watching uh, Front Porch Forum, there is uh, 
you know, here we have the second bullet is public displays to express support of racial justice. Uh, we have a clear, clear uh, division in our community between what people think is an acceptable public display for them uh, and to the extent that, that you, you represent, to the extent we're representing what people feel is their own private. Uh, stuff. And I think that rather than saying that this committee gets to decide uh, what public displays are to support racial justice, that at the very least it ought to have a committee that uh, has some sort of, uh, uh, that, that has a discussion that, that uh, brings uh, opposing viewpoints together and has a recommendation. So you would prefer to take that out and let the committee decide as a whole what they are going to push for or be comfortable with? Well, th this is a really hard thing to discuss because there is absolutely not racial justice. You know, that's an absolute clear thing. Um, the role of our community in that, how we how we get to racial justice here is, is, is kind of what we're talking about. You know, uh, what policies and procedures on the Johnson level, you know, you know, I'm very familiar with North Minneapolis and the extent to which it's been redlined. Um, you know, what, it's a little bit of a different situation here, but, you know, I know that when I had basketball teams with the, in the, the old men's league, I know that, that I had terrific guys who were, who were of color and there was still an underlying current. I couldn't believe it, you know. But nevertheless, how we approach this as a community, I think, is important. <laughs> so, uh, can I chime in? Go ahead, Matt. I um, really like what Doug just said there. Um, I think we need to be careful to, well, first of all, we need to get be careful if we're if we're going to include, if this is going to be a joint effort between town and village, we need to be careful about not getting too far ahead of ourselves, bringing the trustees in early in the conversation so that we can have a joint conversation, a joint meeting, so that we, you know, we don't get out too far on our own with this. So, um, second point I just want to make is, is um, maintain re maintaining representation by a large cr cross section of the community which um, I think we've seen both with the inclusivity statement and with the, with the Boryang workshop. Um, and in both instances, there was an, an initial vision and then, you know, there was some concern while well, the Peace and Justice Center, there was a recommendation to go to the Peace and Justice Center, but there was some, um, some conflict about that. And so out of that, Eric proposed Boryang, did some research and, and brought that back. And, and that made, I think, a stronger um, having sort of more people from more perspectives involved, I think, brought us to a better place. Um, and to Scott's point of view, to Scott's point, I think I was just, he mentioned this to me earlier in the day and I was going to parrot it, but he already wrote it, um, that it needs strong facilitation and we need to, we need to be really careful about that and to not just leave it up to um, the winds to, to decide who's going to lead the group, but we really need to be, be very conscious of that. So those are my thoughts. Thank you. Um, I have more thoughts if, if this is a good time. Go ahead, Carl. Okay. Um, so I'm kind of hearing two things. I'm hearing a racial justice committee which works towards and only towards racial justice, which would mean that people that would be interested in, in this committee and the people that I would hope we would appoint to this committee would be folks that are completely committed to, to uh, racial justice. Um, so you're kind of either for that or you're not. Um, and then I'm hearing that we want something that's more about unifying the town. Um, so I'm kind of hearing two, I, I'm still hearing two different things right now, which, which is fine, but I think we should need to hash that out because 
um, there will be, you know, the, the racial justice stuff that that's, that's what that is. <laughs> it's not really about, um, um, uh, figuring out where people's positions on it or how they, uh, anyway, I just, I just feel like th there'll be the, that, that will turn into something that the, that I, I feel the initial in, intention is not is not for that's something different um not sure how articulate i'm being but does that does that make sense to anyone else <laughs> and also i think that i mean this is not this is not a new I, we don't necessarily have to reinvent this wheel i think other communities outside of vermont particularly are doing this already and that this is where we could loop again the the agencies that we've already been working with for some maybe some guidance on how to create this um like yeah human rights commission bor yang she'll she'll know exactly how to set this up um and then we can you know customize it a little to our town but i think it, it's um it's racial justice is racial justice <laughs> it's not about working through our division so to speak I guess, and I'll just speak for myself, obviously, personally, is I would see that anybody who would serve on this committee would would see the need for racial justice. What I think I'm trying to get at is the means that that's, we move forward. And there are different varying opinions on how we go forward. And those are the people that we need to bring together and I think we will have a stronger outcome and it'll be a better outcome if we have those diverse opinions in part of the, uh, the committee. Those are my thoughts. Yeah, I have no issue with diverse opinions about how, how, how you know, of course there should be, should be that dialogue within any committee, but, um, but I think that's why it's so important that we do set pretty clear guidelines of what the role of this committee is, because I could see it getting really muddled and really go south fast. Do you know what I mean? Like if we're not very clear on what what the sort of you know the the charges, so to speak, for this committee. Um, and that's why I, I actually really appreciate these bullet points because I think they're really clear about what the, what the focus should be on. Is there any other board members that would like to speak to this? And I guess before we get too deep into the weeds of it, I think uh, Nat brought it up that we really should throw this over the trustees and and look at having a joint meeting so that we can hash the sale. It's not something we can decide tonight. Mm -hmm. Is it at a point where the board would be comfortable sending it over for the trustees to look at? I'm not in favor of the second bullet point. I think that's a very divisive, um, from just reading Front Porch Forum, that's a very divisive uh, um, issue. I mean, if, if they, depending on how you stock, depending on how you set up the committee, if you <laughs> line up all, all very, very strong advocates uh, with a single view, they will have a certain position. And whereas if you get people discussing what this ought to be, then I would be in favor of, of, of that bullet point. Part of this was to remove, uh, as I recall, Eric's charge was to remove stress. He, you know, he'd seen the Craftsbury outcome and, and he talked to, uh, he'd seen what was, Cambridge was, was addressing this. And uh, I, I don't, you know, I, I think that we're not there as far as deciding whether we are uh, want to line it up with people who are just pedal to the metal on this, or if we want to to use it to 
to synthesize a view in our community about what racial justice is. Well, and maybe to your point, Doug, that is something that the committee would decide is what, if any, and what it would look like for public displays or not, and let the committees uh, go forward with that. We should set the broad yeah. policies and procedures and let them do the, uh, you know, the, the hard work. Yeah, and I think it's important to remember that they're, they're just going to be giving us recommendations. At the end of the day, we still vote on those recommendations up or right. down. So it's not like they're in a position of, you know, authority to do that. They're just going to, you know, we're still going to have to ha have our own discussion about it and vote, but they're just, they're going to, like any other committee, they give us a recommendation. Yep. Um, so what if we remove that one bullet with what we send over to the trustees and if, if there's strong sediment when we meet jointly to put it back in, that can be a joint decision. I would rather keep it in and then let them see what they say and then we decide together if we take it out or not, no? That's just my opinion. Yeah. Um. Uh, I'll throw in a little point of order. I guess not a point of order, but a little bit of background. Um, the trustees, as I understand it, uh, you know, Scott is the only trustee that I, I see on right now, but uh, I hope I'm not putting words in their mouth, but the trustees, as I understand it, are seeking a committee specifically to help them deal with the question about the uh, Black Lives Matter flags on Main Street. So I think to make the committee useful to the trustees, we need to have something like this in there. Um, I'm not married to the, the exact wording, but um, I think for it to be of utility to them, we're going to have to have something in there about how to deal with public displays. Okay. Then I, then I'm actually, if you have a committee that is is not, uh, it'd be kind of like boy during a uh, a jury. If you if you have someone that says I'm in favor of this and we stock it with all the people that are one way or another you're 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 foreordaining the, the recommendation Eric. anyone else Eric. Go ahead, Mike public displays uh, we have them already in the village green uh, in support of racial justice. Um, there was some talk, as I recall, uh, with the trustees about the signs uh, and how long they were going to be there uh, and who was going to service them or, or take them down. It doesn't necessarily mean to me that uh, somebody would want to fly a, you know, a flag over the municipal office building. It could also mean public displays in the village green with the signs that everybody has up there. So I don't necessarily think it would go to the point where, as Doug was mentioning, stack a board uh, to try to get a flag flying someplace. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that. And like uh, the, our boards are the ultimate deciders of, of what's gonna happen. These will be just recommendations from uh, this committee. I hope I made sense with what I said. I hope I didn't ramble yeah. on, but. Okay, I'm, I'm sensing some unsureness with this particular bullet. Uh, we could send it over to the trustees with that highlighted that you know, we're not sure if we want this in there or not. Uh, but I, I think we should get moving on. You know, let's get it over there for them. And, uh, you know, let's not, uh, you know, 
spend a whole lot of time on this tonight because it's going to change, I'm sure, quite a bit. Are we uh, going to open it up to the public? To yes, I was going to do that if the board is okay. pretty much at a point. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to emphasize that that last point you made about this is a this is really subject to change and and um, it's a it's a it's a draft or a first draft right. and yeah. by no means the final draft. So if it's a, a place to start discussion with the trustees, then that's, yep. that's okay. Okay, so why don't we open it up, Brian, to anybody from the public who'd like to speak to this? Okay, I've got uh, Jeff Bigford up first. Okay, go Thank ahead. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Brian. Um, as I mentioned in chat, it is a set of recommendations, and I think that where there, as Mike said, where there are already public displays, um, a committee to sort of work through recommendations related to any public displays is a good idea. I also want to say that I'm really glad that it's looking like it's going to be a joint committee. I hope that that work goes well because the kind of archaic communique of what is town, what is village, what is state right of way on Route 15 is really kind of beside the point from anyone trying to, from anyone who's just sort of casually observing the town and trying to get a sense of where the town is at and, and like, is this a place that's interesting to live or that I feel safe potentially living in? Um, and so having that be a joint effort, I think will be really important. And I'm glad that that's moving forward in that way. Thank you, Jeff. Do we have anyone else, Brian? Uh, Jeff is the only person with his hand up. I've got a couple of comments from chat that I'll, I'll read. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jeff had earlier said uh, we can, I, uh, he just had some wording to suggest for the, the bullet point here, I think. Um, identify opportunities to collaborate with area agencies and partners on these initiatives. Um, Scott or Kim had uh, expressed that they believed that volunteers need to include all viewpoints and that the belief that a strong moderator is needed to facilitate this. Uh, I added the bullet point that we don't, I think Scott's right here, um, you know, that we're going to need a facilitator. Uh, Greg Tatro echoed the statement that uh, we need a variety of voices. Uh, Scott had commented that um, trustees would want something about public displays, he, he believes. Um, Cal had uh, indicated that we can we should run this by the Human Rights Commission uh, and Bo Yang for guidance. Uh, Scott and Kim uh, expressed some support for kind of the way the conversation was going, um, you know, uh, about listening and, and talking to each other. Uh, Jeff Bickford expressed support for the second bullet point. Uh, Walter expressed some skepticism for the second bullet point, uh, saying that the second it, bullet is a predetermined procedure set by the board. So I think that gets at Doug's comment about kind of uh, predetermining action by the, the, the committee. Uh, and then a couple asking me to read the chat comments. Uh, okay, uh, and Jackie would like to speak. Uh, okay, there you go, Jackie. Great, thank you, Brian. Um, hello, everybody, it's, it's good to be with you. Um, again, I'm so glad we're having this conversation. I, I think we're off to a good start. And, um, and I'm, I'm glad that, you know, the work has begun uh, to formalize um, some of this work that was started a couple of years ago. And, um, and I'm so proud of our town for, for starting a couple of years ago and for being ahead of the curve. A lot, a lot of other towns are, are just now beginning to grapple uh, with some of these issues and, and, and they're, you know, 
kind of feeling chaotic, but uh, we have a couple of uh, a couple of uh, things to our credit that have have us on a more firm footing. Um, you know, working the town and the village working together, we know that this can become a, a cumbersome thing. Um, that's not any surprise to anybody. And so I'm thinking that th this all is going to take um, some time. So in the meanwhile, I don't know if this is the right time to bring this up, but um, the work that we began, we had uh, Bo Yang come and give a townwide um, educational program with Amanda and the other guy back in February, I think it was. So I wonder if we could move ahead at least with an education piece while this committee is being worked out and formulated, what is it, what, what's its purpose, who, who's gonna be on it, who's not gonna be on it, and why or why not. Um, can we move ahead uh, just the town like we did last time and uh, contact uh, the Human Rights uh, Commission, Bor Yang, and see if she has a recommendation for a, a sort of second stage of education for our town so that we can keep moving and not get bogged down with procedural stuff. Thank you, Jackie. Is there anyone else, Brian? Uh, Shane has his hand up. Okay, go ahead, Shane. Yeah, um, I just want to do, uh, I hope, address what Doug and Walter had said about um, possibly predetermining a certain conclusion. Um, I think the, the way it is worded doesn't necessarily predetermine that they're going to say, yes, we should put up this particular flag. They may do whatever due diligence they need to do and come back and say, um, you know, something very similar to what Walter said a couple weeks ago about, you know, you can't put writing over a, a state right away. So um, that is just, I, I don't think it necessarily predetermines anything. Um, but as, for, as far as membership goes, I think it is important that everyone who is on the committee is at least committed to the goals of the committee, um, you know, advancing the ideas of racial justice. Um, but something Walter said earlier uh, kind of resonated with me of, of or sorry, not Walter, uh, Doug, um, it looks different here than it does in Minneapolis to, uh, you know, to address that kind of racial justice divide. Um, and I think that here it's much more about trying to find the people who aren't bought into it and get them on board as opposed to some of the more, um, you know, I, I think it's a lot more, the, the, the battle lines are more firmly drawn in, in some of the more populated places. So that's just my two cents. Thank you, Shane. Do we have anyone else, Brian? Uh, I've got a couple new comments from chat. Uh, expressing support for um, the education opportunities that uh, Jackie mentioned and asking Human Rights Commission about uh, a second training. Okay. Uh, and Greg Tetro has his hand up. Okay. Unmuting you, Greg. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'd just like to comment on the uh, group. I think it needs to include um, people who may not uh, believe this is an issue because if we want everybody to uh, work together on racial justice, then you know, you really kind of got to include everybody. And uh, so there might be some people there that, well, they, they might like it or they may not, but if the discussion goes well and they have an opportunity to express their opinion, well, maybe we can change it a little bit. And then if we do that, that could be like a domino effect. So, um, you know, somebody like myself, if I believed in it, I could tell a bunch of people or some, you know, somebody that may not be uh, on board from the beginning. To me, I just wonder if we're gonna have a board that's already on board, what's the sense of having a board, you know? Cause you, you, you need to get people to buy in. Um, and I think you need to get people to buy in in most everything we do in life. So that's my opinion, thanks. Thank you, Greg. 
Is the board prepared to vote on sending this over to the trustees? Do we have to vote on it, Eric? Can we just? Well, probably not. If, if we're in consent of ready to send it over to the trustees. I mean, I feel like voting on it is kind of like. Be finalized. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is a first draft. Is there anyone who objects to sending this on over to the trustees now? I think it's a good idea. Yep. Kyle? We do have another member from the public asking to speak. On this issue? I believe so. Rick Opperly's hand went up. Uh, okay. Okay, Rick, I'm unmuting you. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, so I've been listening pretty closely to this conversation. I'm trying to keep an open mind. But I also see that you open this draft by citing the Johnson inclusivity statement. And I think it warrants rereading the inclusivity statement. And it says the people of Johnson embrace inclusiveness and together we will build bridges to understanding, ensuring that all who live, work, and visit our town feel welcome and safe. We reject racism, bigotry, discrimination, violence, and hatred in all its forms. The things we embrace are kindness, gentleness, understanding, neighborliness, peace, tolerance, and respect for all, for and toward all. Sorry. Together, we can have a cooperative, sustainable, and thriving community where everyone is honored and valued. I feel it's really important that we stick to the principles that have been recommended by the community, voted on by the community, amended by the community. And I think if we get too concerned with trying to appease too many people, and I'm not saying not have many voices in the conversation, but this idea of racial justice, I feel like you're trying to negotiate what racial justice is. And I think we all have a pretty good understanding of what racial justice is. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Rick. So previously, it sounded like by consent, all board members were prepared and ready to send this over to the trustees. Okay, let's move on to the next item. All right. Give me a second to rearrange my screen here. Okay, next up, uh, appointment of a second alternate to the Memorial FiberNet Communications Union District. Uh, when we took this up before, uh, we were kind of still in the process of communicating with Paul Warden. Um, he had expressed an interest uh, and we liked having him in, um, but we didn't have a, but it, we weren't quite, quite ready. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, Paul has, has communicated back. He's ready to accept the appointment if we're ready to, to make it. What's the board's pleasure? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Appoint Paul Warden. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. A motion and second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Congratulations, Paul. Uh, Charlie is trying to get our attention here. Or is he cleaning his screen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's Charlie? What would he like? So, I got a question about this CUD thing. One, how are the meetings worn since it's a municipality? And two, how do you access their minutes? 
I'm not sure how you access their minutes. Uh, they are warning it themselves. It is not a town of Johnson. Uh, I, I suppose my question is directed at Doug, who is an alternate. I think there's a, I think they have a, they had a meeting at 5.30 tonight. They're setting up a website. Um, and I think that they will be there. And I believe the minutes are available right now. Previously, they were uh, set up through LCPC. I can find the answer to that in the voluminous materials that I have from them. But uh, the minutes are available. Where? I can't tell you that now. <laughs> These are not available. <laughs> you no, know, it means you don't know. You neither you nor I know where they are. <laughs> means they're not available to me and you. Mm -hmm. And probably everyone else watching this. Moving on. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> so we'll, when the website is set up, we'll share it through town channels to make sure that everybody can find it. Okay, the draft building notification ordinance. Uh, so there's not a lot to share on this other than uh, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns is experiencing a, a significant delay in their legal services. Uh, so they will not be able to uh, review the building notification ordinance for us. So I'm seeking legal uh, an estimate for legal review from the town's regular attorney. I don't know why this would be any more than any other ordinance that we have our legal attorneys. We always have them check our ordinance proposals. Yep. I, I don't think there's anything here. Uh, it's more uh, that I believe that we had said that we were specifically sending it to the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Right. And At no cost. We're, we're not sending it to League of Cities and Towns because they are booked. So they're not doing it. We have to send it to somebody else. Go ahead, Mike. If I'm not mistaken, we had some talk about actually moving this to town meeting next year. Yep. So if that be the case, what's the hurry? I'm sure that Vermont leagues of cities and towns will uh, eventually uh, get to the point where they can do this for us without the town spending more money uh, by our attorney to review this. I'm sure that by next March, uh, hopefully things will be a lot better than they are now and they'll be able to get to it. Uh, two quick points on that. Um, Vermont League of Cities and Towns would not do it for free, although it would probably be less than our town attorney. Well, that's the point right there. Our uh, job is to try to save the town money on everything we do. Uh, we will have the cost estimate from our attorney and an opportunity to see whether we think that that is uh, an affordable price or, or not. Uh, the other th comment I have on that is um, we really don't know what their turnaround time is. If you recall uh, their turnaround time, I think the last thing we had them review at the League of Cities and Towns was our animal control ordinance. Uh, which took quite a while, and that wasn't a time when they were experiencing an especially high volume. Um, and that was our, our uh, highway access policy. When we updated that one, we had them look it over, and that, that again, that took quite a while, and they weren't experiencing high volume at that time. Um, so I would recommend that we uh, at least consider the cost estimate returned by our regular attorney when it's available. We should have a cost estimate from Vermont leagues of cities and towns also. They declined to provide one. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Oh. They, they say that they have nothing, no room on their calendar right now to take this up at all. Doesn't mean in a couple of months they wouldn't. It, it would sit on it. We could sit on it for a couple of months and then ask them again. If we're going to wait to a town meeting, what's the big deal? Well, I think one thing to remember, Mike, is they're very good at helping us as we're building and drafting up an ordinance, uh, but they will not uh, represent us in court. 
and they will even recommend that you run it by your own attorney. Yes, I, know. I, I think it's ready for that. Um, you know, we could be penny wise and pound foolish if, if we tried to put something through that our attorneys can't defend. So I think that it's wise money spent to get an attorney to uh, do a once over on it. We could just drop the whole thing and forget about it. Well, then we save like, money there. What I'd like to see is to get this done, get it through our attorney, and then give it to the voters at town meeting. Okay. All right. I'm not sure how the rest of the board thinks on that, but that's what that's where I'm sort of parked. I'd like to see it go before the voters on town meeting day. Me too. I can live with that. Yeah. I'd hope to have the cost estimate available tonight, but um, it, it's not ready yet. It, it'll be ready in the next couple of days. Does the board want to wait for an estimate or just send it over to our attorneys? We're probably talking 150 bucks, 200 bucks. I'd say 300 at the outside. I'm ready to send it. Let's send it. Let's Great. send it. Okay. Nay. <laughs> the, the, um, the, the question of sending it, of, of doing it at town meeting or not, I think is still open. I, I think it's a good way to go. I would hope the board would consider it, but I don't think a decision's been made on that. No, I don't think we have formally made that decision. We've certainly talked around it. Um, I know you've expressed you'd like to wait. I'd like to see it wait for town meeting. I think Mike does. I'm not no sure about that. Kyle or, or uh, Doug. Okay, well, let's see what we get back from the attorney. We may have a little more work to do on it. Green Mountain Byway. This was an invoice, right? So this is a, an invoice that bears a little bit of attention. It's worth us spending a little bit of attention on this one. Uh, the Green Mountain Byway, when we talked about joining this, uh, we had expected the cost to be relatively low. Uh, and we were joining it with the village. Um, the Green Mountain Byway Association uh, is updating their website and making a number of improvements to that. We purchased some signs uh, that should be going up. Um, so there, there's been some progress here, but it, it is significantly more expensive. And uh, the village feels that the town is getting the bulk of the benefit from it. So they have uh, declined to participate in sharing the cost. So the total cost is a thousand dollars. Yes. What evidence have we seen of anything from this group helping benefiting Johnson? It's tough to provide evidence for that kind of economic development activity. We get listed in uh, more promotional materials produced by the state. And unfortunately right now we mostly get listed in promotional materials produced by this group, which is why the cost is quite a bit higher. Uh, that we were, we had joined the group with the belief and the intention of getting included in more uh, state and federal advertising. Um, and the state and federal government, have, their participation has been declining. Uh, so it's being made up by the local group which is why they are asking for a greater contribution on our part to continue to participate. What's the board's pleasure? Could I get a little more clarification? Brian, do you know why the village believes that the town is getting a better benefit, a bigger benefit from this? Uh, because all of the businesses are in the town and asking the village voters to pay the, they'd be paying the town's share and the village's share. Can you explain that further? Yeah. So any everybody in the village, uh, you know, pays town taxes and village taxes. So any cost that the village and the town share, the village voters end up paying the 
share of their contribution in the town taxes, and then they end up paying a share in their contribution in their village taxes an additional time. Um, so that they felt that this felt this fell unfairly on downtown uh, businesses and the village. That's where the businesses are. Well, history. We're not going to persuade them in this meeting to uh, contribute. Um, I'm just looking at their website, Green Mountain Byway, Vermont. What are we actually getting for this thousand dollars? Our representation on their website. I mean, yeah, there's some representation from the six member towns here, but geez, boy, for Johnson, it's really token. It's it's a uh, strong emphasis on Stowe and in the resorts. They have dominated the conversation, and I'll be frank that uh, I'm writing. I, I have to write all the copy that we include. Uh, you noticed so that too. <laughs> I could really, uh, and I'll put this out to the public. Um, if we could get some representation to sit on this committee, uh, that would help out. I'm guessing Stowe probably put up a lot of funding for this website. We haven't done anywhere near what they have, I'm guessing. Why don't we forget about it? Do they drop us from the website if we don't, uh, if we don't give them a thousand bucks? Uh, yeah, we would not be a participating community anymore. Well, it's the board's pleasure. Do you want to continue being participating member at a thousand dollars or not? No. I think no. that during the pandemic period, it's uh, problematic about what we're going to get. You know, there are you know, people aren't traveling. I know this is for the long haul. Mm -hmm. um, is that a yes, maybe? <laughs> it's a really cool project and I can see the benefit of it for the town, but I don't, I don't like the, I don't know, feels like it needs to be more transparent or something like just to send us an invoice every once in a while. And just say no, Nat. <laughs> well, you're the business. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, Brian, we talked about this with Johnson Works um, a bit. And I think we were, you know, obviously anything that can be remotely helpful to our downtown businesses is a good thing for us. So um, we were, we were supportive of it. I can't, yep. um, I also couldn't give you any sort of tangible numbers in terms of what it's bringing to our town, but I just, I always think <laughs> being on the map any way we can is a good thing. So, um, I I don't think I think the price tag is awfully high, but I do think that this is uh, there is some value in this, uh, and any promotion that we can uh, participate in for our downtown businesses, this is not the most effective, but uh, this one is running, not terrifically well, but it is running and it is working with little input on our side. That, um, you know, I'd like if we were included a little bit more, uh, if they, if we had that, but a certain amount of that is on, that we have to send them more, we have to be a more active participant. Um, but we're getting something out of it. Well, what if we posed it to, uh, I'm sorry, did you have your hand up, Meg? Yeah, I was just going to say, why don't we just tell them all we can afford is 500 bucks. They might come back and let us stay. You never know. Can we, can we ask Johnson Works, perhaps, and say, you know, we'll continue to support this if, 
you have a member from Johnson Works who will participate in the bylaw on the byways committee and keep us up to date with what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we I have think a, meeting. a pretty good proposal that uh, yeah. if we can get more out of it, then it's worth more of our money and uh, you know, we'll have a greater impact. We could uh, craft a motion that approves this contingent upon a one year trial basis with participating by uh, participation by the Johnson Works Committee to improve the Johnson's presence. And if we don't see it over the year, then next year we would not renew it. I don't mean it to sound like an ultimatum, but Kyle, what do you think about that as the Johnson Works president? Um, I have a feeling this is going to be me and me. <laughs> um, but I, I was working on trying to get Shane to take over for me. Oh, okay. Um, we I'm have a meeting. We have our monthly meeting coming up on the 11th, so I'd be I would be more than happy to bring up this idea. I don't want it to come off as a threat, you know, it's yeah. just like, yeah. but, but you could certainly share the reservations that the board is having and spending this kind of money if we're not getting any benefit for our local yes. business. Yeah, we actually, a new member is on our board is Tess Milner, who's the executive director of the Lamoille County um, Chamber of Commerce. So she may have some further sort of insight on how this is working for other Lamoille County communities and, and if she thinks it's worth us staying and, you know, um, participating. So, okay. Yeah. Um, what's the board's pleasure again? We're going to hold off till next meeting. We could. Let's just do, I'm gonna make the motion that Eric suggested, he, he, the way he put it. Continue, $1,000, continue for the year, and if Johnson Works, or someone from the Johnson community, steps up to um, represent Johnson on the Byways Committee, um, that would really um, persuade us to continue with it in the future. We have a motion, do we have a second? I'll second that. Motion is second. Any more discussion? Nat, are you going to vote in favor of your motion? <laughs> I, haven't decided, I haven't decided yet, Eric. Charlie, Charlie put in chat that, that we're not connected, but I think that if you have Stowe and, uh, and you have the loop through Smuggler's Notch over, I, I think that, that their participation is not particularly important. Uh, and uh, Morris, Town actually is participating. Yeah. They ended up joining. Okay. Yeah. Any other discussion? Uh, Charlie seems to have disagreed with that, but I've got him on mute, so. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you, Charlie. So go the ahead. government of Morristown may have agreed, but the property owners have not. So we are not connected from Stowe through Morristown to Johnson, to the best of my knowledge. What property owners are you talking about? There's some private landowners at the trail that the byway passes through. Uh, no, it's all the state covers roads. All, all public roads. Uh, it does not need a specific pathway. My error. Um, and it doesn't actually need to be contiguous either. Um, we also meet up through Cambridge because they joined. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other, any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. And the chair votes in favor. Motion passes. Uh, we need a roll call vote if it's not unanimous. Okay. Sorry about that that. Uh, Mike, Mike? Nay. Nay. Doug? Aye. Aye. Nat? Aye. Aye. Kyle? Aye. Aye. And the chair votes in favor as well. Motion passes four to one.
All right. Website management. So we recently had uh, a problem with our, our website, so we had to bring in uh, bring in somebody for a little bit of assistance, and they uh, provided provided us with some recommendations for um, kind of managing the website going forward. Um, timing on this isn't great in terms of how it fits into our annual uh, planning and budgeting, but this is something that's been on our radar that, you know, we're not getting, um, our, our website is could be better managed. Um, you know, we could run updates more frequently. Uh, right now, when we're running updates, we have a problem of if it breaks something, uh, then it's my time. I'm trying to work with tech support and trying to fix it myself, and it's difficult. Um, so working with somebody, uh, they give us an outline here of uh, cost estimate for maintenance at $340 annually. And they also provide an option for web hosting, um, which I've got to say the uh, tech support that we get from our hosting service is very unsatisfactory. Um, I think Rosemary can speak to that as well, uh, that we have a really hard time dealing with whenever we have to deal with them uh, the amount of time we waste on hold trying to get through and trying to get support. Um, so I, I think this is something that we should very much consider. This is an item that we share these expenses with the village. So uh, this is something we would have to take to them as well. So those estimated costs would be in half. The yes. three, 340 and 270. And uh, I think that we could afford this, uh, Rosemary can correct me, but I think we could afford this uh, with some deferred expenses from our uh, computer upgrade program. Um, you know, that we could, we could upgrade a little bit less of our hardware uh, to afford this for one year and then incorporate it into the budget if we're satisfied and want to continue it for another year. I mean, we're talking 600 ish dollars. Yeah. And half of that's 300, the town share. What do we budget anyhow? For website maintenance? Nothing. Yes. Oh, nothing? Okay. Uh, which is why we need it. Okay. Mike? I tell you, if it straightens that uh, web pages out for $300, that's going to be a deal. This won't be an upgrade of our website. This is just our website as it is right now. We still have to make the content and do everything else for it. But uh, when it went down uh, last week and you couldn't access any of the menus, so you couldn't get to anything other than the front page uh, for a couple days. And Susan and I couldn't figure out how to fix it. That we'd have somebody who could do it on a regular basis We'd have somebody on call to do it who would provide a certain amount of support ongoing and um, you know, would be available at a uh, much more reasonable rate than if we had to call people ad hoc the way we do now. Right. That's, I guess that's my point, that uh, $300 is going to be a bargain for straightening out some of the problems. Yeah. And that also includes at that price, the website security. Yeah. Which the really improved website security, which would fix a problem that we have uh, that we don't have what's called an SSL, uh, which is a secure socket layer. Uh, when you see a website, it says HTTPS. That's a secure link. If it says HTTP, that's not a secure link. Our website is not a secure link. Uh, so it is vulnerable to certain types of attacks uh, 
for people providing information to us. That said, people don't provide us with any information uh, other than you can fill out a contact form. Uh, the real issue is with the payment processing and that so that doesn't include us but it would make our website look a little bit nicer you will i don't know some of the people in the audience have probably when you go to our website you get a, an alert that this is not a secure connection um, again it doesn't really matter because we're not transmitting anything to us but it, it's a little more professional yeah what's board's pleasure do it that motion yes it is mr chairman we have a second second we got a motion and a second any discussion uh i want to be clear mike your motion was contingent on the village agreeing. yes thank you good clarification i'm sure that's what the second had in mind <laughs> <laughs> any other discussion Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. Aye. Um, aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. And the next item is just uh, information, all right? Uh, well, the, the next one is the my ICMA membership and oh. uh, digital conference right. registration. Yes, sorry, I missed that one. Uh, so my, the membership dues are up for the International Professional Association. Uh, it's in, it's international the same way that we have, uh, you know, World Series in baseball. It it, it is North American, um, but it, it, the the professional association I feel I get a lot out of it. Um, you know, I, I feel I get some good support for it, and I would like to continue to be a member. Uh, the Dues are, I think, rather high. Um, the board has paid them in the past, but uh, yeah, it, it's pretty high, so I wanted to run it by the board. Uh, also, the uh, digital conference is coming up uh, this year, and I want to attend. Um, as you may or may not remember, I was part of the planning committee uh, when this was supposed to be an in-person conference uh, this year. So. I helped to develop. I helped develop the programming for the uh, international conference this year, and I, I want to attend. How much are the dues? Say again. How much are the dues? It is uh, five hundred fifty-two dollars and sixteen cents. Board members, have any questions, or what's your pleasure? I'm. Uh, I'm quite pleased that Brian has uh, joined this. Um, you know, I, I see it as um, continue, continuing education, uh, so su supporting that for our, uh, for our professionals. And um, I, I just think it's a good thing. It's, it's, uh, I support it. You're doing so much work for him, Brian. Are you, uh, you better get a job working for him? <laughs> it would be nice to get a discount on the uh, conference, but uh, since there is no hotel registration, the conference rate is discounted heavily um, from the regular rate. So the conference will be an additional uh, $199 uh, down from the regular conference attendance of uh, $499. And I would assume that you get a lot of uh, networking that's made through this that helps you in your job here when we are dealing with certain things to reach out and get some other expert opinions. Yep, I, I served on a panel for the planning commission for the, the, I did transition to the planning commission for the digital conference and uh, we've done a lot of work on uh, uh, providing information for emergency management, uh, for fi financial management, uh, dealing with COVID-19, uh, dealing with uh, natural disasters. We're talking a little bit about climate change, and uh, we've ha we have a pretty big component on uh, racial justice for this year also. You went to one of their conferences on your own dime, didn't you? I did. Yeah. 
uh, last year's conference, um, I hadn't planned on going. And then I had the opportunity to serve on the planning committee for this year. So I wanted to go last year, but we didn't work it into the budget because I had, the time I was writing the budget, I didn't know I was going to be going. Mm -hmm. So I went on my own dime that time. How much did that cost you? Uh, yeah, that was about a thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah, my my wife was not, you know, she <laughs> wasn't too pleased about uh, doing that much work, paying to do that much work. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for doing. It. You need a motion? Yeah, okay. go ahead. Uh, so move that we pay the dues. Is that what it is? The dues for the uh, the dues ICM and the conference board. registration and conference registration for ICM Amen. Motion. Do we have a second? I second it. Motion and second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, sing five, saying aye. Okay. Aye. 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 Those opposed. The ayes have it. Thank you. The next one's an informational one, right? Yes, that's our informational. The Moyle County Sheriff. Monthly report is available via your email. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Can we go back to that uh, ICMA business again? Sure. Does the board think we should reimburse Brian uh, for his out of pocket expense for that? I think we settled that last year. I mean, it'd be a nice gesture, but I, I think. Ryan told us he was headed out to do it. And I think the only thing he asked was that he didn't have to take vacation days to do it. And we approved okay. that. Mm -hmm. um, so you got a good memory, Nat. I appreciate you bringing it up. Yeah. Well, Thank I just, you. I remember him doing it and I, I just think it's a cool thing that he's doing it. And I, I certainly appreciate it. Yes, we all do, but you know, that was quite an expense. It was something I volunteered to do. It was not, um, Okay. It was not in our, our professional development budget. Uh, we couldn't, it, it was it was not appropriate for me to charge the town for that much expense for something that was not planned for. Okay. This one is, we planned for. You're quite a spendthrift there, Mike. You just want to give it away all the time. <laughs> well, no, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's part of, uh, you know, personal development. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, he, didn't you, get with somebody on some grant or something out there? Did, did uh, I did that... uh, get a grant to help pay for my costs. Okay. But did you, didn't you meet somebody else out there too that gave us some help in our town? Um, nothing that's come through yet, but uh, I am working on, that has helped with the EDA grant. I've got some grant writing uh, help from some other folks that have had approved grants. Um, through that process. So it, it is, it does come back to help the town. Okay. But I guess that's my point. I mean, I don't like to spend money just for the sake of spending money, but you know, you did do a service to the town and uh, I appreciate what you did. Mike, I was just kidding. I, yeah, I know. I know you were, but uh, <laughs> I just had to do that just to see if I could get you to say what you just said. <laughs> um. Go ahead, Kyle. Yeah, could I also, as well, we're looping back here. I'd like to loop back to our racial justice committee conversation and um, Jackie's request for secondary education um, wasn't really addressed and at least four people supported that idea in the chat. So I'd like to just revisit that idea of bringing Bore and her team back for a some kind of Zoom educational program sponsored by the town. Board members' thoughts? Not hearing any. I think it's a good idea. Okay. Uh, I'll point out that I've got a conversation 
going with uh, Or Yang about our uh, Working Communities Challenge grant opportunity. So uh, it, I can have uh, at least an informal conversation with her quite easily. Okay, great. Yep, yep. Maybe you can bring something back to us. And uh, Brian Van Dorn, uh, you've got your hand up. Uh, okay, you're oh. unmuted. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate the discussion. Um, we definitely need education. I would, I would hope for multiple opportunities, different, you know, a, a variety of education. I, I did miss the first one, but would definitely look to be involved in future ones. So good, good plans. Thank you, Brian. Great. So Brian, would would you be willing to initiate that conversation and then? Come back to a future meeting and yeah. we'll, dis we'll discuss it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we had a few items that we added to the agenda. Um, yes. The COVID-19, you were just gonna brief us on what uh, uh, Lisa's actually, looking for? I have a draft of the waiver. Um, Lisa was able to provide that to me. Uh, give me a second to share my screen again. So a uh, little bit of detail. Um, we're interested, I guess we don't, the, we don't know yet whether we'll be providing, um, Keep laughing. I see Greg's cat playing with the camera. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering what that was. Um, the uh, we're we're not sure about how we're going to do fall sports and what that's going to look like yet. But if we are going to have anything for fall sports, we're going to need to start working on that right now. Our current plan for fall sports is to. Uh, stay in line with uh, the Union School District, that we use them for guidance on uh, matters about whether we run or don't run, um, weather delays, things like that. Uh, they're a really good resource for us, and um, they've got a great deal of expertise to help help manage this. So we rely on them a lot. So if, if they're running their sports program, we would like, we'd like to run ours. We think we're going to have coaches. We think it's going to be possible. Um, I'll let Lisa get into a little bit more detail if anybody's got questions in that area. But the the key takeaway for right now is that if we're going to run any kind of uh, sports program in the fall, we need to be working on uh, on a few details now. One of those details being, um, you know, what what do we do? What's our liability look like? Uh, this form is a uh, release of liability that a few other organizations are using and I and uh, so we want to show we want to give this to the board and make sure that they're interested in us pursuing something like this we do not know uh, we don't know how effective it is this isn't written by our attorney or run by our attorney but uh, it, it's part of the association correct for uh Recreation. Uh, Lisa, I'm going to unmute you. Okay, go ahead. It's from the ACCD website. So they released um, return to play, um, a document guiding return to play in each of the phases. And this is a part of that document. And it's pretty boilerplate. It seems to be, yeah. And it seems to me, checking with other areas that um, this is sort of commonplace is to put this into youth sports now um, until we have, a, probably until we have better control or something, you know. For now, people are, are using it. And I think part of it's an education tool to say, you know, just remind people there is risk in gathering and be paying, paying attention. And you're bringing that to the select board because it would be a requirement for all parents of kids involved in any fall sports. Yes, and it would be an addition to our um, standard 
procedure for registration. Okay. Board members have any questions of Lisa or Brian? I have a question. I wonder if, uh, well, we have insurance, right? Yes. And our, and our insurance, our insurer probably should pass on this if he, if they like this. If it does, you know, because they're much, uh, they're more qualified than we as a town board are to pass on this. Uh, that's a good point. We can pretty easily run it by uh, the league and uh, like I said, this is coming from ACCD, so I'm sure they've seen it before, so they yeah. must have an opinion on it already. Yeah. Is the board comfortable approving, applying this contingent upon the VLCT's blessing or do we want it brought back to us with their thoughts. With their blessing is fine. Yeah. Same. Yep, same here. I'm fine with that. Their blessing to me means if they will in, ensure us running these programs with this, then I'd be in favor of it. Okay. Yeah. So yes. we prepared to make a motion. That, that's Uh, Diana has a question that says, sounds like running things by VLCT isn't really easy right now. Uh, this runs through a different department at VLCT. This will not run through their, uh, what's called the MAC, which is the Municipal Assistance Center. This would run through their insurance wing. Uh, so it would have a, a different staff to review it. They have greater incentive to review this than they do the other thing. Yes. <laughs> they have a personal stake in that. Yeah. 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 I agree with Doug's statement he had a minute ago. So, yeah, I'll move that um, we accept this pending uh, approval from uh, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns uh, passive insurance. If they finish that properly. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion second. Do we have any more discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Uh, the next thing we had brought Rodriguez resignation letter, but is that even uh, pertinent now since we've done away with the committee he's resigning from? So, I would say no. Yeah, I wouldn't say we'd have to accept his resignation letter. Uh, the only other thing I did want to bring up is this Friday night at five o'clock, we will be doing a community-wide Zoom broadcast again from uh, uh, well, this week. We're going to have representatives of the Studio Center and the uh, NVU to talk about their uh, returning students and the protocols they're going to have in place and safety precautions, as well as being available for a Q&A. And I think Lisa might be trying to find some uh, entertainment as well. So you'll start seeing notices in the our media forms over the next few days. Great. Uh, hopefully we get good turnout, people interested uh, on what the, those two organizations are putting in place so they won't be, you know, they'll be safe and hopefully would not uh, impact our community in a negative way. Anybody got anything else I want to bring up? Or is there anybody from the uh, public that wants to speak? Uh, I don't see anybody from the public. A complainant never showed up. Yes, I believe she never did, correct, Brian? No, I didn't see anybody. Uh, we've got a phone number. I don't recall if this is one of the same phone numbers we had before, but if you're on by phone and you want to speak, you need to dial 69, uh, I think it's star 69 maybe. Uh, to let us know that you want to speak. Okay. Okay, unless anybody's got anything else.
we'll stand adjourned. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good night.